Okay, y'all ready to get started? Praise God. Is everybody excited to be here tonight even though it's raining, huh? Pray, yes, praise God. Hey, God knows when we need the rain, so we thank him for it. Amen? Okay, before we get started, let's go to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to ask everybody if you would stand up, please. Let's honor God as we pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your love. We thank you so much for your son, Jesus. We thank you so much, Lord, that you allow us to come into this church building and worship you freely. We thank you so much, Lord, for what you're doing. You, you bless us so abundantly. It's unreal. And God, I thank you for that. And God, we need to take the blessings that you give us and go show other people how much Jesus loves each and every one of us here in Open Arms Church. God, we just praise you. We thank you. And I just pray tonight, Lord, that we have a good time in you. But Lord, I pray that everything is said and done. It comes only from you, not from me. And uh, don't let nothing come out of my mouth, Lord. Unless it's all from you. Now, God, uh, just uh, bless everyone here tonight. Let's have a great time. Bless the, the young adult class, our youth class, our children's class. Bless them all. And let everybody bring the word that's all about you. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> okay, got some questions to ask. You know, every time I do a Wednesday night, I like to ask questions, right? How many has been blessed so much with material things? Huh? I mean, seriously. I, and we, you know, we have material things. How many has been blessed so much with material things? Huh? I think everybody's got your hand. If you didn't have your hand up, I was going to say, do you have something to drive? Do you have a place to sleep? I mean, I could just go on. As, as Hired always says, it's, it's a blessing to turn on the light switch and have lights. It's a blessing to go to the refrigerator and have something there to eat. But you know, the United States, and this is the reason God gave me this message. The United States has been blessed so much. Listen to me just a minute. Has been blessed so much above all other countries out there. The United States is the top blessed there is. But, look what's happening. We have stuff abundantly given to us. We eat whenever we want to. We go wherever we want to go. We do whatever we want to do. <clears throat> and everything's out there. It just comes so much. But now, what's happened? What's truly happened? They said now there's a shortage of gas. There's one place in Danville that can't even get no gas right now. Been out for a few days. They say it's a shortage of, of, of groceries, the food. Now, wait a minute. We're talking about the United States is blessed abundantly. Do what? Baby form. Baby form. I and mean, that's something very, very important. I do construction work, and I've all the last year has been hard to get certain things, and everything when you try to do get it, it costs you so much you can't afford to buy it. So I had a call last week and said, John, don't start no new projects. Anything to do with concrete because we can't get concrete, can't get the cement to make concrete. So don't start nothing. I don't know how long it's going to last. And, and, I, and I really, you know, at the, and what, what God got a hold of me and the reason he gave me this message is I worry too much. And worry is a sin. We worry about when gas prices go up, we get mad, we get aggravated, and God says, I create the gas. I create everything on this earth that you use, John. Everything that, that, that's here belongs to me. And I provide all your needs abundantly. Because see, what I've been looking at was the material things that I have abundantly been getting. And when they start slowing down and, and stop coming to me, then I start saying, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? How are we going to survive, David, when the, all the stuff, we, we, we can't get it no more. We can't get the, the formula for baby food. We can't get concrete to start a new house. I do that kind of work, so what am I going to do? And I, and I was sitting there, I was sitting there trying to figure all this out, and God says, well, you need to you need to bring the word about my abundance. My abundance. 
So we're going to be talking completely different about what the abundance we get. We need the spiritual abundance from Jesus Christ. Amen? That's the abundance we need. So we're going into the Word. There's several scriptures I've got for you tonight. But we're going into the Word. All right, Pastor, you said this thing's working. Okay, did you do it? Okay. All right. Ephesians 3, 19 through 20 says, And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Now, abundantly, God wants us to have things, all right? Whether it's material things, spiritually, it don't really matter. He wants us to have everything a Christian needs. Not what we want, what he knows that we need. But we got to have the power. God gives us the power that worketh in us. How many uses your power to get what you need? I got one in the back. Thank you, Mike. How many uses the power that God gives you to receive what you need? Now, what you want to receive what you need. I mean, my goodness, if God gave us the power and he gave it to us through Holy Spirit, what are you doing with it? What, what are we doing? I want to put, because see, I was complaining about the, the, the diesel getting higher, and I, I've got two diesel trucks. I was complaining the gas getting higher because my wife's got a, a gas, a car that's gas. I was complaining about the prices of everything going up. I was complaining because I can't get what I need, and yet I never go to Jesus and say, I've got the power. I've got the authority to rebuke everything that's out there. Why can't I ask him to take care of what I need, not what I want? Why can't I? Why can't you? Why can't any of us? If we got the power and authority, why don't we do it? Huh? I mean, I think everybody here is sitting here trying to think, wait a minute, John, I, I don't really understand what you're saying. But I'm hoping when we get through this whole thing, you're going to see it completely different, Okay? This is just the beginning. How are you doing, brother? Better? Praise God. Bless. Give everybody give a hand, Williams. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians 9, 7, 8 says, Every man according as he proposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Okay. Okay. We got a problem. We got a problem that everything's going crazy and we don't understand why it's happening. How many in here truly, don't raise your hand, but how many in here truly in your heart gives cheerfully? Huh? Amen. Now, if, if you don't give cheerfully, guess what? God might not bless you and give it back to you. He might not, he might not give it back to you. I mean, God's God. And, and all right, let me explain to you what I mean by giving cheerfully, okay? Because this is more of a this is more of a teach, teaching. Because God taught me, so He told me to teach you all tonight. It's not a preaching message; it's a teaching message. All right. So He's taught He's told me to teach you what I can about giving. God tells us in His Word to give ten percent. He should have told us to give ninety and use ten percent. But He loved us enough; He knew we couldn't do it. So he told us to give 10%. Now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, and I hope everybody on Facebook is listening. How many truthfully, don't raise your hand, I don't want to know, but how many truthfully gives 10% of what you make? I mean, how many truthfully, I'm just asking, don't want to know, how many truthfully gives 10% of what you make? Now, there's a lot of people that gives 10% after they've got everything paid for. Come on, and see? Now, now you're talking, you're, you're answering me. That's what I want. That's, I want to get involved and everybody talk back to me. You've got to give the 10% of exactly what you got first before you give anything else. You've got to give God his 
Now, the best thing you want to you want to really reach and, and see some great things happening in your life, give above and beyond what you can. Give above and beyond what you can. Give the 10% and give something else. Now, I'm not saying it always to church. I'm not. You're supposed to give your 10% to the tithe to the storehouse, and, and then the storehouse is taken, and it does the work of, of God, what God wants the church to do. But what about, what about you've got this money set aside for vacation, okay? You, and and you've got it set up. You can't wait for a vacation. You're excited. Now, listen, David. I, I didn't see that. <clears throat> so you got this money set aside for a vacation, and all of a sudden, you've got a, 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 a friend that's not really close to you, but you know this person. And that person is getting ready to have their lights turned off. Now, what's more important, that vacation or taking that money and give it to somebody that needs their lights turned back on? Now look, exactly, because that's a cheerful giver. It's when you do it because you care about somebody else except more than yourself. That you care more for somebody else than you do yourself. Even though you just, you can't wait. I work hard for that money, and I want to go on vacation. But God says, what about this? Now let me tell you what happens. I've seen this done in my lifetime. Let me tell you what happens. When you take that money out of that vacation fund and you go give to somebody that's really in need, God will say, I'm going to give you the best vacation that you could ever have. And he will. It might not be right now, but I guarantee you that you will get blessed so much it's unreal. Do it cheerfully. And listen, don't brag on it. Don't go around telling people. If you want to get blessed by God abundantly, don't go around telling them, look what I did. The best thing you do is don't even tell nobody. There's things that my wife don't even know that I've done. Because I don't want nobody to know but God. And, and, and I'm, I'm just saying that just keep it between you and God. And that is a true, cheerful giver right there. And that's what God's talking about. That's what he's talking about. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Every good work. Has anybody had a job that wasn't good? <laughs> My goodness, the whole... I think every one of us has been through that, but let me tell you what God can do. If your heart is right, He will make that God, that job very pleasing. It might be hard right now. It might be, it might be something that God's going through a test with you. It might be that God's trying to show you something. Maybe God's getting ready to use you to the one that you work for. I mean, you might be reaching and touching somebody else. So be careful. Try. Try your best to keep your eyes on Jesus and be cheerful and do what God, the work you're supposed to do, not for yourself, but for Jesus. Because there might be someone in that workplace that needs Jesus. And the only way they're going to get it is through who? Everybody point to me. Point to yourself. No, point to yourself. I, I know. Praise the Lord. Let, let's, let's just, listen, I, I want you all to get everything God's got for each and every one of us. I want you to have it all. And the way to get it all is to live what his word tells us to do. And that's why this is this abundantly thing that God's got for us from him. He, and we're going to see more. It's going to be exciting before we get through this thing, I promise you. But I'm telling you, if you start doing what it says, you will see your life change as a Christian that you thought. Everybody here been on the Mayus Walk? Most of us? Every one of us probably thought we didn't need that, including me. I've told this so many times. I didn't think I needed that. I thought I was up there. I, you know, here I was, an elder, been a deacon, led music. I've done all this. I've done everything. I've been close to God. But I didn't think I needed it. But when I went on a walk, I found out God had different, a different thing. And he showed me so many things on my walk. So you never get too much of God. 
until you get ready to be raptured out of here when that trumpet sounds, then we need to get closer to God and learn more of what his word says to each and every one of us. Amen? Everybody in agreement with that? All right. Go to the next one, Pastor. Don't tell me yours is not working either. Oh, that is the next one. I'm sorry. I'm still sorry, Pastor. <clears throat> I might have to get some more glasses. I don't know. 2 Corinthians 9, 9 through 10 says, As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. Now, he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food. And multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. How many here wants their fruits increased? Huh? Well, how do you get that? Sowing the seed, right? What it says. You're watching. You're listening. Praise God. That's what it is. If you want your fruits increased, if you want to abundantly get your fruit, listen, you sow that seed, and even though that you can't save that person, don't even think that you can, but sow that seed, let somebody else water it, let Holy Spirit save them, and I guarantee you down the road, you will have the fruit that next time you walk somewhere, they're going to see Jesus in you, and they're going to respect you, and they're going to want what you got. They are going to want what you got, because what you did, you planted a seed. And God says, by you planting that seed, I'm going to fill your fruits. I'm going to give you more. I'm going to give you so much. You know, as we had Monday night uh, Bible study, a lot of you was here, and you about, we had a Bible night, uh, the Bible night, uh, Monday night Bible study. I was so blessed to see the, the, the ladies and even some men that said, I want to lay this down. I want to give this up. I want to do that. Even, even though there was Christians, they knew if they took their last breath, they would be with Jesus. But there was still a hope on them. And that's what happens even as a Christian. You get a hold on you and you allow something out there to take advantage of you. As a Christian now, and it happens. But I, I love when they, they, they laid it down. They asked to be prayed over, and it was took away. And now there's no hope there if they keep their focus on Jesus. And also, I know that I, I said this so many times that when I pray, I, I walk and pray to God, and I ask God uh, for so many things in my life. Not only for me, but I pray for you, and individually I lift the church up, the leaders, I pray, I just pray constantly. But when I stop and listen to what God tells me, I'm telling you, my fruit of Jesus glows. I just feel like, I, I can't see myself, but I feel like I'm glowing, David. I feel like I'm glowing because I'm listening to what he tells me to do. See, it's so hard sometimes. Uh, let me use this. It's so hard sometimes if this was a Diet Pepsi. It's so hard sometimes for me to not want it. That was my thing. There's people that wants that needs to quit smoking. And I'm not going to pick on nobody. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not. I can't judge you. And you can't judge me. I'm just preaching the word. I'm bringing the message that God wants. But there's some that wants to, needs to quit smoking. There's some that needs to quit chewing tobacco. There's some that needs to quit drinking Diet Pepsis. There's some that needs to get back in church regularly. I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. There's so much that as a true Christian, that we're living a Christian life, but there's something that's stopping us from getting the abundance that God wants us to have. There's something that's stopping it, David. What is it? So I had to look at my own problem. I said, God, I'm going to walk today, and I want you to please show me what I need to give up. It might be that I work too much. I'm serious. It might be that, that I don't give enough time to my family. Main thing, I don't need to give enough time to God. So there's something that's stopping us to get from that abundance that God's got for us. So let's give up what's got a hold on us. Does everybody agree with that? So if we give up what, what's holding us back, 
you will get your finances blessed. You will get your health blessed. You will get everything that God wants you to have. There's nowhere in the Bible you'll find out that God wants you to have cancer. There's nowhere in the Bible that God wants you to be sick. There's nowhere in the Bible that God wants you to have anything wrong with you, your finances. I'm going to show you in Scripture in a minute where he wants you to prosper, where he wants you to have good health. I'm going to show you that in a minute because that's what he wants. But in order, in order to receive that, in order to get that, we've got to do something. It's not free. It's not free. Jesus died on the cross freely, yes. But the freedom that we, he gave us, we let Satan take advantage. And by him taking advantage, we give him what he wants because we live in this old wicked world. We can't get the abundance that we need. We should never be worried about what the fuel cost is. We should never be worried about because there's no chicken at the chicken house. We should never be worried because we haven't got the material to build something. We should never be worried that we don't have the baby formula for our babies. Don't get me wrong. Don't, don't get mad at me, ladies, but God gave you breasts for a reason. And that's to feed them little babies. Men is, the world and men has took that away. So I'm telling you, God provides everything that we need, not what we want, but everything we need. But when we don't get it, then we need to check ourselves. We need to check ourselves. He has talked to me so much today. David, I can say this, and I mean it with all my heart. I have been triple blessed today. I have, Pastor. I have, I have been triple blessed today. I, I, every time I go to do something, God showed me that what was going to happen before it happened. And the first time it happened, I thought, wow, God. And it, 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 But the thing I didn't realize, I shouldn't be overwhelmed because that's what he wants for me. And that's why he gave me this message this starting Monday on it. I started working on this Monday. And that's why he gave Monday night. That's why he gave it to me. And I thought, then the, a less than an hour later, another miracle happened in my life. Then, boom, I thought, praise God. I did, praise God. And then, then I turned around, and, and this very final thing that happened, I thought, didn't even think about it. And another blessing come even more powerful than the other two, Pastor. And it, it just, I didn't even get shocked. I just got amazed and thankful to Jesus. I did. I got blessed tremendously. And see, that's, I'll give you my heart. That's what I want for everybody here. That's what I want for this whole church. I want you all just, yes, Pastor, good. I want you all to have what God wants you to have. And all we got to do is change the way we live. Get back on God's word and live the way God wants us to live. We don't have to have all the money in the world. We just need enough to live by. We don't have to have the best car, the best house, the best church building. We don't have to have all that. I just thank God that we got a church building like we got. I give him the, the glory and the credit for it, every bit of it. I was mentioning it a while ago. I would never dream I would be here 10 years. 10 years ago, I wouldn't dream I'd be here now. But God's plan always comes through. If, if he didn't use us, he'll use somebody else, David. He will. So thank Jesus. Go to the next one. 2 Peter 1, 2, through three, 1, 2 and 3 says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power, there's that power again, hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. I'm going to stop for a minute. He's given us what? All. What does all mean? All. all means all. That's all all means. That's everything, David. That's all the gas I need to run my truck. Amen. All the diesel I need. All my food I need to, to live on. 
I don't care if it goes to $50 a gallon. God says, I'll provide if you keep focused on me and quit worrying about what the world's doing out there. That's how come I got blessed three times a day. I gave it to him. I said, no more. I'm not worrying about that stuff out there. I'm just going to live each day joyful, happy. I, how many in here feels good right now, health-wise? I mean, truthfully. Then we all should be just sitting there thanking God for that miracle. That's abundance of, of good health he's gave us. How many in here got something to eat today? Huh? My goodness, we will be thankful. That's God took care of us. And, and let me say this. If we run out of food, there's a lot of deer come to my farm. David vouched for that. I've got plenty of deer there. We'll shoot them and eat them. Don't be worried about where you're going to eat, where you're going to sleep, what's going to happen to my body. Think about what God says. I want to bless you abundantly. I want you to have right there the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord according as his divine power hath given us to us all things that pertain unto life. What is life? That's us breathing right now. I really think he wants us more healthier right now than any other time in the world. And I tell you the reason why, because I say it every time I preach. The last days. He's got to have us. He's got to have us. He's called us. He's called every one of us here to be here for a reason. And that reason is before that trumpet sounds to go out and reach the ones and sow that seed. As sister says, sow that seed and then let the fruit of you show everywhere you go. And he says, if you do that, you'll have good health. I'll bless your fruits. I'll give you everything you need. And let that thing that's, that's holding on to you, let it go. Whatever it is, let it go. If it's drinking too many Diet Pepsis or if it's anything else out there, that, that you enjoy doing more than you do anything else, then it's the devil. It's the devil. So, so let it go. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. It, you let it go. Get rid of it. And then God can use us because, listen, the worker out there is few. They're few. The laborers are few. And we got work to do in this church. We got to get, we got to look, just look around, which we got. A class there, class up there, class back there, and that's good. You bring them all out here, we'd have a good bunch. But there's still some empty chairs. So we got work to do. I love what Pastor says. They'll come. They'll come. And we don't have to go and knock on their doors and beat them up. But they will see the fruits of us. And they will want that. And they'll say, where are you getting that at? Open Arms Church. Open Arms Church. Come on, get some of it. Come here. And it will fill up. So let's get, let's get cleaned up tonight. Amen. 3 John 2 through 4 says, Beloved. Everybody point to yourself. Beloved. Come on, say beloved. On the count of, all right, on the count of three, let's do it together. One, two, three. Beloved. So God is talking to who? All right. Here we go. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. Does God want us healthy? I mean, every one of us, I told you I was going to show you scripture. He don't want nobody sick. So, so let me ask this. Greg, why do we get sick? Hey, praise God. I'm serious. I mean, exactly what I wanted to hear. We got, we've, got, we've got the power that I showed you at the very beginning to rebuke anything Satan throws at us. We can stop anything bad and evil that's coming towards us. And God says, I've got to clean you up first as my, as my child. I need you cleaned up. Even though you, when you take your last breath, you will be with Jesus. But while we live on this, in this wicked world, we cannot let things become our God. So we got to get that gone if we want to be good health. 
I can't expect God to heal me if I'm throwing something in my body that's not right. I can't expect it, Pastor. I can't expect God to heal me. How can, let me say this. How can I go pray for somebody that's just got cancer if I'm putting cigarettes or chewing tobacco? How can I pray for that person? Oh, shoot, I know it's going to get quiet. I didn't want to teach this tonight. I asked God to let Pastor teach it. I did, Pastor. I said, I'll go and just do a song. I'll sing a song a cappella tonight. I said, I just let Pastor, let Pastor bring this message. I'll give it to him. He come down here and do, do it. But I cannot go and pray for somebody if I'm doing something that's not right in my own body. If, if, I'm, if I'm lushing for a girl and, and it's a man and woman, marriage is messed up, and I'm lushing at another woman, how in the world can I go and tell them not to do what they're doing? I can't. Yes. Pre here. <laughs> See, that's what I want from you all. I learn more at Bible study from you all. Me and Pastor both said this. We learn more from you all than we even realize that you knew because of your walk with God. You all have got God teaching already. You get into the Word, you learn the Word, you know the Word. Now, you got to be obedient to do it. And that's what I'm trying to get at you tonight. If there's something out there that's controlling you, how in the world are you going to pray for somebody else and expect God to take care of them if it's controlling you? That's all I'm saying. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to judge nobody. I promise you. I don't know who does what. I, I, don't, I don't know who does what. And, and really, that's between you and God what you do. It's between you and God. But I still got to bring what God tells me to bring, even though it might hurt. Amen? All right. For I rejoice greatly when, when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee. Even as thou walkest in the truth, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. All right, where did you get the truth at? What did Jesus do when he, when he left the disciples and was ascended to heaven? What did he send here? What is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the truth. And what, does, what did he say? The truth will set you free. How many wants to be free tonight? I don't care what it is. What it is, if you truly ask Jesus in your heart, he sent the Holy Spirit. And they're one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and they live in you. And you've got to clean yourself up. John's got to clean himself up. Let me do it that way. John has got to clean himself up. In order for God to use me to his fullness, he can use me right now, David, but there's certain places I can't go because what I'm doing right now in my life. So I've got to be completely clean before I can go pray for somebody about things. I've got to make sure if I'm drinking too many Diet Pepsis, if I'm, if I'm destroying my body, then I can't go pray for health for somebody. I'll use that. I'll, I'll quit using cigarettes and, and tobacco and drinking. I'll use my, myself as Diet Pepsis. I've got to quit it. And then the truth will show how I am, David. I can hide a lot from you all. I can. But I can't hide nothing from God. I can't hide one thing from God. Not one thing. I can't. So if I'm going to get set free and he's going to be happy with me, then the truth has got to come out. And I've got to walk in that. I've got to walk in that truth. And let me tell you, I can walk in a lie for a while. I can. But eventually, God says it'll come to light. And when it does, the truth comes out. So let's, let's get right now. Because he's what, he's what he's, we're, we're are the ones he's got right now to this, at this end times. And he's wanting to use us so much to tell everybody about him. So let's be truthful. Let's get right with God. Let's do it tonight. Okay, Pastor, go to the next one. John 21, 5 through 6. I love this one. Oh, I, I love. Pastor, I could preach on this by itself. I can. John 21, 5 through 6 says, Then Jesus saith unto them, Children. I love it when he calls them children. 
have ye any meat? They answered him, no. And he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. My goodness. Let me ask you this question now. How many times has Jesus says, I want you to listen to me, I want you to do this, and you thought, I can't do that. I'm, I had to get me out of my comfort zone. I can't do that. And he says, throw it on the right side. How many times has, has God, Holy Spirit, Jesus, God, all three in one, has told me, he says, John, throw it to the right. And I wouldn't do it. I just wouldn't do it. I was too busy to do it. I didn't listen to Jesus. But today he told me to throw it to the right. And I got three blessings. I got all I could handle. I got all that I could handle. Just because I listened to him, I throwed it to the right just like he asked. And then I, abundantly was I filled. Listen, there's no way you can haul the fish in, David. I know you're a big fisherman. But if you listen to Jesus, he wants you to reach the fish out there of people. And he wants every one of us to reach, the, the, reach every person out there. And he says, just listen to me. Go the way I tell you to go. Do what I tell you to do. And abundantly you will get filled with what he wants you to do. You cannot, if you'll just listen. Listen, there's so many times that we got things in our life that we, we're concerned about. We're worried, we get worried and worries of sin, but we still do it. And we get, we get, we're, we don't know what to do. So we go to God finally and start praying, start begging, start pleading. And we never take time to listen. And when he does, and we finally get to the point, you, you hear a preacher say, you need to listen to what Jesus is telling you back after you pray. And when you finally do, and he says, John, cast it to the right. And you say, oh, I can't do that. I know who's over on that right side. I can't go in front of people and tell my testimony. Oh, I can't get up in front, uh, up there and, and, and say what Jesus did for me. And then we wonder why we don't get a whole thing of fish. We wonder why things is not going our way. We want what we want instead of what Jesus wants us to have. We do. And he wants to give us everything, you all. He wants us to pull in. A, there, there was so much the blessings that we get as pastor goes around the church and says, I'll take what you don't. That's what God wants us to have every day. That we can't handle it. We can't handle the blessings. That's what he wants for each and every one of us. And if we'll just listen to Jesus, we will rake in so much, it's unreal. He will bless us financially. He will bless our health. He will bless our children. He will bless our generations on down until he comes back and takes us out of here. And all we got to do is just say, where do you want me to throw the net, Jesus? And then be willing to throw that net where he tells you to. Does anybody want to do that tonight? Amen. Huh? I mean, I do. I think everybody in here does. It's not that we're bad people. It's that sometimes we just don't listen. I never will forget as a kid, I had this teacher my first grade teacher she taught my my sister is five years older than me and she taught her and she always thought a lot of my sister because every time I had a teacher in Springfield Baptist Church they would be there in church so I couldn't get away with nothing so this teacher told my daddy one day when I got up there and she was my teacher in first grade he's nothing like his sister she would listen to do this. He's nothing like that. He won't listen or do what I tell him. And I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, I'm going to get in trouble. But if we would just listen and be obedient to what Jesus tells us to do, oh, it, it's, just, it's just unreal what you can do. It's unreal, Pastor, what we all can do. And, again, I want it for everybody in here. I want it for everybody who would just... Do what God wants us to do. Praise the Lord. Go to the next one, Pastor. Luke 6, 45 through 46. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. 
And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. Call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say. I thank everybody that you talk to. Oh, I know who the Lord is. Oh, I've heard about the Lord when I was a kid. You know, you hear more about God. You hear more about the Lord. You don't hear many but say Jesus. And I've, I, I've thought about that and prayed about that. And the reason that you don't hear the word Jesus as much, because it's convicting. I can say God all I want. I can say, Lord, bless the Lord, bless you, Lord, bless the Lord. But Jesus will convict your heart. Why don't we say more Jesus? Jesus is the one. He's the one. He's the one. Jesus. On the count of three, let's say Jesus real loud. One, two, three. Jesus! Oh, my goodness. Shoo. Don't they give you chills? Uh, it does. It gives you chills. Look at this again. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. See, I want to bring everything that God gives me to you all. Because I know if I bring it from God, it's good. Now, what I bring you sometimes probably no good. I mess up. But if I bring it from God, if I bring it from the Word, sometimes it gets on our toes like it does mine. Sometimes it hurts, but it's good. It's, I think that's the reason that, that, that Jesus sent my pastor here to learn how what to say gooder and gooder. I'm serious. He, he sent my pastor here for me to learn gooder and gooder. I never heard that word before, gooder and gooder. But there's a lot of things I never heard since he's been here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But God is, I mean, he is so good. He, he, I'm, I can sit here and just tell you what me and pastors just went through since he's been here. And it's just brought us so close together. From the very beginning, pastor, from the very beginning in the office, we both wanted the same thing. And guess what that is? Jesus. That's all I want. Worship him. That's all I want. Go to the next one, Pastor. Everybody stand up. I know it probably went fast tonight, but that's okay. I tell you the truth, when I started, I wanted to just go five minutes and get out of here. I know it was it was a hard teaching because I know it got on my toes so bad that I just whew, I, I just didn't want to bring it to you all tonight. I really didn't. But I know Jesus wanted it. It says John 10 9 says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. So easy, so simple. And shall go in and out and find pastor. And he goes right on in to 10 and 11. It says, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. How many of you heard this here lately of, of people that got killed, even in churches? Even families killing families. How many of you heard lately about anybody stealing things? It's getting worse all the time. Well, that's the devil. That's the devil using the people that he can. And see, the, as I said a while ago, the laborers that God's got are few. Because we don't want to get out of our comfort zone and go tell people that Jesus is real. And there's the only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ to be with God for eternity. That's the only way. And we need to stand up and go out and and clean ourselves up. Clean John Russell needs to clean up. And go tell people. And pray for people that I can pray for them no matter what I've done in my past. From this point on, I quit doing the stuff that, that was controlling me. The only one that controls me now, David, is Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only one. 
I, I, if I take my last breath, stand right here in front of you right now, that's the only one that controls me. And I tell you what, I love him better than I do my wife, and I love my wife so much. I love him better than I do my children, and I love my children so much. I love him better than I do my pastor, and I love him so much. Jesus is number one in my life. So the thief, the devil, is to try to get every one of us to look the other way. Whether it's through drugs, whether it's through Diet Pepsis, too many, whether it's through whatever sin is out there. He wants you to look at him and tell you how good that would taste, David. He wants you to look at Greg and say how good that would be to be able to start doing that again. You enjoyed it for a while, so why not go back and try it again? Nobody will know. Nobody will say nothing. But God will. You can't hide it from God. I, I, again, I'm not here to judge nobody. I had to point all the fingers to me. I would. I'd have to point all the fingers to me. And I thank God that I got a, a loving Savior that loved me enough to die for me, that I can take care of the devil through Jesus. It says, I am come that they might have life, mm. and that they might have it more abundantly. Oh, my goodness. That's what he died for. We talk about all this abundance the world's got for us, the most abundance we need is Jesus Christ. That's right, Greg, right up there. That's all we need. And he will take care of the rest of the things out there, you all. There's nothing Satan can throw at us, nothing, not one thing that we can't stop through Jesus Christ. There's not one thing. He can try all he wants, but if we stay focused and we have that relationship with Jesus in our life, and we listen when he talks to us, and we throw that net on the side that he tells us to throw it at, and we let go of everything that we don't need, there's no telling what Open Arms Church can do with Jesus ahead of it. Amen? Amen. Praise God. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. I'm a sheep. I'm a sheep. I tell you what, I think I'm a cute little lamb, brother. I am. I, I'm, a, I'm a cute little lamb because, because of Jesus loves me that much, and I want to listen to him. I want to listen to him. I want to be obedient, do what he, do y'all want to tonight give up something? Is there anybody here besides me who wants to give up something? Huh? I, praise God. I think we all do. Well, I'll tell you what I want you to do tonight. I want you to come and give it to God. And then, when you lay it down, when you lay that down tonight, I don't know why, I don't know why, David. I don't know why. I just got to say it. Would you get the vacuum cleaner out for me? Would you, when, I, when we all get up from here and leave, would you sweep that up? Because we're going to leave some stuff here tonight. And you're not going to take it back with you. You're not going to take it back with you. You won't be able to because it's going to be in a bag. And it's going to be a bunch of other junk in that bag. And you don't want it no more. You want to get rid of it. And it's junk. It's nothing but Satan's junk. And then when you get up, you're going to feel like you're a free man and woman because we are going to be free. We're going to lay it down, all right? Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray with all my heart that we all just give everything up, that's anything that's holding us. I don't care whether it's something to do with cigarettes, whether it's to do with chewing tobacco, whether it's doing drugs, whether it's doing drinking, whether it's doing Diet Cokes, whether it's doing something we eat, whether it's doing sexual. There's something there, Lord, that we, we want to desire more than you. Then please let us all lay it at the cross. When we get up, Oh, my goodness. Well, when we get up, I, I can't wait to get there. When we get up, we're going to be free, as free as the wind blows. And I give you the praise and glory for it all tonight, Lord. 
God, I just want to say I love you with all my heart. And I thank you that you allow somebody like me to get up here and bring your word and let you do it, even though sometimes it's hard. I love you for it, and I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.